This is a short update to my previous video on Bluebird Bio. In my previous video, I talked about the two suspected unexpected serious adverse reactions that Bluebird Bio noted in two of their ongoing clinical trials. One patient who was treated more than five years ago with lentiviral vector developed acute myeloid leukemia. Also another patient who was treated more than five years ago with lentiviral vector developed myelodysplastic syndrome. As a result of these two suspected unexpected serious adverse reactions, the ongoing clinical trials involving the same lentiviral vector uh, for various other treatments were put on hold. And as a result, not unexpected of course, the stock price has come down quite significantly since the reporting of this event, which was reported on by Bluebird Bio on February 25th, 2021 initially. Bluebird Bio have of course analyzed those patients and the clinical findings in much more detail and have worked with several independent leading academic experts who also work in lentil viral vector gene therapy. Together, they have assessed where in the gene the lentiviral vector insertion actually occurred and whether this was uh, responsible for a change in the gene regulation or gene expression that could explain the possibility of the two reported cases. Bluebird Bio state in their March 10 press release on their own website, I leave a link in the description below, that multiple independent analyses have confirmed that the vector insertion in the AML cells from this particular patient took place in the VAMP4 gene. And the VAMP4 gene has no known role in the development of AML or in the processes related to any other type of cancer. Bluebird have also extended their investigation to find out if there was any disruption in normal gene regulation or gene expression around the site of the vector insertion. And based on the findings, Bluebird Bio and the other scientists involved came to the conclusion that there was no change of gene regulation or gene expressions at all. And based on these findings, Bluebird Bio come to the conclusion that it is extremely unlikely that the case of acute myeloid leukemia could be related to the treatment with lentiviral vector. Due to the regulatory requirements, Bluebird Bio may not decide themselves to resume the currently on hold clinical studies that involve the same lentiviral vector treatments. But Bluebird Bio have started the process of discussing with the FDA as well as the EMA to continue the clinical studies involving sickle cell disease research and beta thalassemia. There now remains the second uh, patient with myelodysplastic syndrome. Also here, we seem to have good news. The diagnosis for myelodysplastic syndrome was based on prolonged anemia following lenticlobin for a sickle cell disease infusion coupled with the observation of trisomy 8 in a small percentage of the patient's bone marrow cells. But upon examination of the cells in the bone marrow of this particular patient, no blasts or dysplastic cells were seen. And although trisomy 8 is associated with myeloid malignancies, this finding alone is not sufficient for the diagnosis of myeloid dysplastic syndrome when uh, no blasts or dysplastic cells can be seen in the bone marrow. This seems to suggest that also this case is completely unrelated to the treatment with lentiviral vector. And Bluebird Bio have more good news to share. On March 15, they reported on positive results for that treatment in cerebral adrenal leukodystrophy. The treatment developed by Bluebird Bio address a rare and devastating disease. The progression of the disease may be rapid and it leads to severe neurological decline and often unfortunately resulting in death. The disease manifests in early childhood and death generally occurs within two years of diagnosis. Thanks to Bluebird Bio's treatment, they reported that two thirds of the patients, and that is 27 out of the 30 participants, are still alive at two year follow-up in their phase two, three clinical trial. And 14 of those remained without major functional disability 
and this is at five years after treatment. And the safety data also shows a lack of autoimmune response against the treatment. Based on these promising and encouraging results, Bluebird Bio expect their treatment to be approved in the EU uh, later this year. With a positive opinion by the European Medicines Agency, EMA, it would likely be approved as an orphan drug, just like the first now commercially available treatment from Bluebird Bio, Zinteglo, is. For the US market, the approval or potential approval by the FDA and launch is targeted for 2022. And so far, the stock market has not really reacted in a major way to these news. Also keep in mind that in January 2021, Bluebird have announced the intent to split the severe genetic disease and oncology businesses into two different and independently publicly traded companies. This separation, likely to occur later on this year, could make it a much easier acquisition target for bigger fish to either grab up the genetic disease business or the oncology business in the future. But, as always, please do keep in mind, I do not intend to give you financial investment advice. I only share some news and my personal opinions about the very interesting field of biotechnology and genetic engineering. If you have enjoyed this video and enjoy similar content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel.